Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Ghost. Thou Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done unto me according to thy word. Thou Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. For forth we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion may we come to know the glory of his resurrection, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, 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 and the io li chiamo dei sedici anni fa, ma mi dà gente non sa che avevano avuto nessuno con loro sopra con me. Qui tu sei un suo di luce, ma ancora repetisci i tuoi tristi in cielo, con un figlio me in cui. E mi dà luce, 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 Spere in Deo, quando vai tocca di Deo, vieni, salutare Gutus me e Deus Vos. Gloria a Patri, Figlio e Spirito e Santo, si potrà tu principio e non che sempre, e in secula seculorum. Amen. In tua volontà di Dei, e di inquilitifica di un tutto meo. Oggi con il nostro nome di Domino, tu feci cielo e terra. Confiti o Dei, mi potenti, Beato Maria, se Virgine, Beato Padre, che hanno di noi, Beato Maria, 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 Be Senza me a tutti i miei potenti sei usi su spettati su di su di che te vita ne fanno. Amen. Confiti o Dei mi potenti, inviate Maria se mi vigili, inviate me cari arcangeli, inviate io anima a Cristo, santi se vostri spetti il polo, uomini più santi se ti vifate, qui è tutta mi nimi scogitazione e bevo e toccolo. Me ho culpa, me ho culpa, me ho massima culpa. E io prego beata Maria se mi vigili, inviate me cari anima a Cangelo, Beato mio Anna Battista, am Santo Sepolcro Spiritum et Paulum, Omne Sancto et Te Pater, Ordari pro me, Domine Deo Nostro. Deseriato Vesvi, e Nipotenseus, et Mispetatis Vesvi, Spidu Te Vos, et Vita Me Tena. Amen. Lugenza me sussiano, me trimissiano, me ritorno, suono, in figlio, et nomi, sono nipotenti, me tene costornis. Amen. In Deus, tu converses me fificatis nas, et clems tu leta abitor in te. Ostendi nobis Domini misericordia in Tua, et salutare Tua unda nobis. Domine es adirazione mea, et clamo es a Te bene. Dominus obispum, et cum spirito Tuo, ordem Deus. Deus tu sulfamo florebit, sicu cetus liberi multiplicabitur, plantatus in domo Domini in altis domus Dei nostri. Bonum est confiteri Dominum et celeri nomini Tua altissime. Gloria, Padre, et Filio, et Spiritu, et Sancto, si puterat in principio e nunc et sempre, et in secula seculorum. Amen. Deus tu sulfamo florebit, sicu cetus liberi multiplicabitur, plantatus in domo Domini in altis domus Dei nostri. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Krisa eleison, Krisa eleison, Krisa eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Gloria in excelsis Deo, et in terra pax omnibus vole voluntatis, laudamus te, benedicimus te, adoramus te, glorificamus te, Gracias a ti, Monsignor, por tu amor y gloria en tu amor. 
Domine Deus, Rex Celestis, Deus Pater Onipotent, Domine Filioni Genita Iesum Christe, Domine Deus, Onius Dei, Filius Patris, qui tolle speccato mundi miserere nobis, qui tolle speccato mundi sushi fai deprecationem nostra, qui se ne sed exeram patris miserere nobis. Coniam tu solus sanctus, tu solus dominus, tu solus altissimus Iesum Christe, cum sanctus spiritu in gloria Dei Patris. Amen. Faccio vobis et cum spirito tu. Orde vos. Adesso, Domini, supplicazioni vos nostris, quals in piazzi de ubetini, confessori, sui solemnitati de ferius, uot quei nostri usizi e fiducia non habemus, e us quittimi flaculit pregibus ad invegum. Per Dominum nostrum, Iesum Christum, Filium tu, qui tecum del deregno ad meritati spiritus santi Deus, erra mia secula seculorum. Amen. Orde vos. Querentium te Domine salvatur et custos, qui beato occult mano, ne paticeps cauint con azionis renuniare seculo, et sub alas tuas configur retribuisti. Eus intercessione de populo tuo, de diabolica vitali contagia, et es solum dominum fioremente sectari. Ad cum dis nos praesimus domini mentis de populis defende periculis, et intercedente beati gloriose sempre virgine et egeretrice e Maria, o beatu Iose e beatis apostis tuis Petrus Paolo, ad quae beatis quitut mani tuel fili et omnibus sanctis, salute et nobis trivio e venius et pacem. O disfuxi sanctis et statibus et gloribus universis ecclesi tue securit e misevi e fidelitate. Per riundum Dominum nostrum, Iesum Christum, Filium tu, qui tecum del darenio ad unanitati spiritus sancti Deus, per romnia secula seculorum. Amen. Dex epistori viazzi Pauli Apostoli et Perintios. Fratres, Spectaculum facti sumus mundo et angelis et hominibus, nos stulti propte Christum, vos autem potentes in Christo, nos infirmi, vos autem fortes, vos nobiles, nos autem innobiles, usque in hanc ordem et assurimus, et sitimus, et nudi sumus, et colapis cadimur, et cedimur, et instabile sumus, et laboramus operantes malibus nostris, maledicimur, et benedicimus, persecutionem patimur, et sustenemus, Asfemamur et obsecramus, tam quam vulgamento cuius munti facti sumus, omnium peri sema usque acut. Non ut cum fundam vos ex tribus, et ut filius meus carissimus moneo, in Christo Iesu Domino nostro. Deo gratias. Os ius imeritabitus apientiam, et lingua est luqueto iudicium, lecteus in codi ipsius, et non supercabundo gressus eius. Alleluia, alleluia. Pe autus vir quitime dominum in mandati seius cupidimis. Alleluia! Dominus obiscum, et cum spirito tuo, sequentia sancti evangelii, secundum Luca, Gloria a ti, Vitorio. In illo tempore, dissi di Esus, discipoli suis, non dite chi mere, cusius rex, tui accomplacuit parti vestu dare bovis segum. Vendite quei vostri decchi, se dati elimoissinam. Facite bovis saculus, qui non refrescam in causa non deficiente menceis. O fur non appropriat, neque ti neo corumpit, o vienem causaurus veste rex, ibi et cor vestrum e. Laus, tibi Christe. On this, the Feast of St. Gilbert of Simpringham, the epistle is taken from the first letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Church of Corinth. 
Brethren, we have been made a spectacle to the whole creation, men and angels alike. We are fools for Christ's sake, you are so wise. We are so helpless, you so stout of heart. You are held in honour while we are despised. Still, as I write, we go hungry and thirsty and naked. We are mishandled, we have no home to settle in. We are hard put to it, working with our own hands. Men revile us and we answer with a blessing. Persecute us and we make the best of it. Speak ill of us and we fall to entreaty. We are still the world's refuse. Everybody thinks himself well rid of us. I am not writing this to shame you. You are my dearly loved children. And I would bring you to a better mind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And the Holy Gospel is the continuation of that according to St Luke. At this time Jesus told his disciples, Do not be afraid, my little flock. Your Father has determined to give you his kingdom. Sell what you have and give alms. So providing yourselves with a purse that time cannot wear holes in, an inexhaustible treasure laid up in heaven, where no thief comes near, no moth consumes. Where your treasure is, there your heart is too. Ave Maria, grazie plena Dominus Tecum, benedictum rieribus et benedictus ultus ventis tu Jesus. Santa Maria, Mate Dei, orbun nobis peccatoribus, nunc et terrarimutis nostre. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii, Spiritus Sancti, Amen. Carissimi beloved in Christ, welcome to this broadcast Mass, as we said on this, the Feast of St. Gilbert of Sempringham. We also, of course, commemorate the continuing octave of St. Cuthman, our co-patron. Gilbert, born around 1083 AD uh, in, the, uh, in the little uh, village of Bourne, uh, not far from Sempringham, uh, in Lincolnshire. He is England's only, uh, sorry, he is Lincoln's only natural born saint uh, and England's only natural born religious founder. For he founded a religious congregation of canons regular and lay brothers and sisters uh, known as the Gilbertines. He was the son of a knight, an Anglo-Norman knight, and perhaps because of some deformity of some kind, um, but anyway, he seemed not to be destined for military service, but rather his father encouraged him in scholarly studies. So even sending him to the university at Paris, uh, there to study at the great faculty of theology. Returning from there in 1120, he entered into the uh, service of Robert Blount, uh, Bishop of Lincoln, as a clerk in Holy Orders, and uh, there continued uh, his training and indeed founded with the Bishop's Blessing a school uh, pointed for uh, girls and boys. Girls and boys. Note, this is about uh, the early uh, 12th century. A free school for boys and girls. The Middle Ages, sometimes referred to as the Dark Ages, are not as dark as people so-called enlightened would have us sometimes think. Anyway, so uh, he did that and in 1130 uh, was uh, ordained priest. His father died in 1131, leaving all his estates and land to Gilbert, who then uh, determined uh, to found this new uh, religious order, uh, starting initially in the house there at Sempringham, building uh, a convent next to the Church of St Andrew, the parish church of Sempringham, so that by 1148 uh, there were dotted around the place some 26 uh, convents, monasteries and missions. But in 1148, uh, he petitioned the abbot of Citeaux for assistance, possibly to develop the order further. But uh, the Cistercian abbot refused uh, his assistance because uh, some of the uh, because the order was uh, uh, contained both men and women. However, uh, the Gilbertines continued, uh, and uh, so did. Uh, Gilbert himself uh, until uh, the ripe old age of 103, dying in the year 1190 AD. The Gilbertines continued after him 
uh, until the Reformation, when they were completely uh, decimated, so that there are today no guillotines at all. There have been, I might add, a couple of attempts uh, in recent years to uh, re-found or restart uh, the guillotines, but none of these as yet uh, have uh, flourished. So we give thanks today for one of England's own sons, we might say, one of England's own sainted sons. We give thanksgiving for his witness, for his testimony, and perhaps for his advanced foresight. Though actually religious communities, mixed religious communities, were quite a thing in the medieval period. Uh, we tend to think uh, perhaps uh, uh, being so unused as we are today uh, that they were something of an oddity, but actually uh, mixed houses uh, of monks and nuns have been going on since about the 6th, 7th century. Um, but, sorry, but uh, um, uh, so we give uh, thanks for his, as it were, foresight for his, uh, and, and for his encouragement of lay vocation. He, of course, just precedes the uh, birth of the mendicant orders, uh, who themselves would continue to develop uh, and encourage uh, lay vocation in their tertiary orders, namely, of course, the Franciscans and the Dominicans, uh, who began at the beginning of the 13th century. But what Gilbert perhaps uh, realised that uh, others did not uh, is that um, there was a need, uh, a way for ordinary men and women to be able to live out uh, the evangelical counsels uh, in the circumstances, uh, or perhaps semi-circumstances of ordinary life. That is to say, of course, that the Gilbert teams established houses uh, where they live together, but of course uh, their work and their ministry was to the people around them. Uh, they were not quite um, uh, monasteries and convents in the conventional sense of that time, uh, though they were conventual. <laughs> uh, so unconventional but conventual. Um, now of course we, my brothers and sisters, as we reflected last week, uh, and as I commended to you, we all of us as Christians, all of us as Christians, are called to share in the evangelical counsels of poverty, chastity and obedience. We are all called to uh, live uh, in the spirit of these counsels. The religious, of course, uh, live them, take them at, uh, literally. And even living in the spirit of these councils, uh, there is, as it were, some almost literal interpretation. But why? Why should we do these things? Well, because, of course, we are pursuing after holiness. That, as we have uh, reflected continually recently, is the whole point of the Christian life. Our lives are to be different, notably different, from those uh, around us. We are to have different attitudes and different approaches to life and to the things of life and to the things that happen in life. Chiefly, of course, our Christian hope is to enable us to endure all things in this life. That we, my brothers and sisters, should never should never have recourse to despair or desolation because of our Christian hope, because we know that this life is going to be hard. We know that nothing is promised to us in this life. As Christians, we should know that. We know that, as Christians, this life is fleeting. We're all going to die. Though the cross and passion and resurrection of our Lord certainly takes away the sting of death and ultimately triumphs over death, nonetheless, we still will pass through that veil of mortality to reach our immortality, or rather, to realise 
our immortality. That we should not fear death, for why should we fear that which will only enable us to realise our fullness in unity with God? When we become divested of this corruptible form and in this corruptible world, uh, we ought to rejoice uh, at the prospect of receiving then our incorruptible form, that exciting and intriguing and mysterious resurrection of the body that may be like that which our Lord himself exhibited in his post-resurrection appearances. Who knows? But there is everything to look forward to. We as Christians living in this world should be able to endure all things, all manner of things, not simply because of our Christian hope, not simply because of our knowledge and our belief uh, that uh, this life is but pass, uh, passing, uh, fleeting, but also too uh, because we have God's grace to assist us. We have the divine revelation to enable us to inform our minds and our consciences and of course our hearts. Seeing with the eyes of faith the revealed truth of the divine revelation of Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, and understanding therefore the nature of this life, the nature of the world, the nature of creation, the relationship of God to creation, and of our relationship with God, all of that, my brothers and sisters, should enable us to cope with what happens in this life because we know the ultimate uh, end of it. We know that all of this is God's purpose and will. We know that we, are, uh, we were given life, we, are, we have the gift of life in order to know God, to know God, to love God through knowledge of him. employing those gifts and abilities and the special characteristics of our human nature that actually are designed to enable us to know God and know his love. For example, much overlooked perhaps, but our ability to uh, rationalise, to think outside the box, to step outside of the limitations and constraints of our empirical existence, i.e. of all that uh, appeals to our senses, or is limited only to our senses, of sight and hearing, of touch and smell, but rather our ability to be able to reason, to objectively, uh, to objectify, to rationalise, So that we should be able to uh, see life's problems uh, with the eyes of faith and understand that these are times probably of testing, times of trial, times of proving, times to improve, times to grow, times to develop. That these trials and sufferings that will come our way because of the nature of this life are opportunities for us to realise God's love, to find God's love, to know God's love, to share God's love. That rather that than being the end in themselves, that those who lose themselves in their emotions and their subjectivity are wont to do, and thus fall into despair, and nihilism, and isolationism, and forlornness, and desolation. We as Christians who see and understand the world with the eyes of faith, who understand the nature of this existence, we are able to rise above that. Or we should be able to rise above that. Be able to use the gift of wisdom, the gift of knowledge, the gift of understanding, to see and recognise 
what is going on around us. Recognising that though something may appear, though something may feel like it is the end of the world, well, so far it has never been the end of the world. The sun has still risen the next day. And though, of course, we live with expectation, with the hope and the promise that the Lord will return and the end of the world will come, even so, we know that we can endure all things because we understand, because we are able uh, to uh, rationalise. See, part of the Christian life is realising that we are so much more than the immediate uh, physicality and senses of our condition. We're so much more than our base passions and carnal lusts. We're so much more than our selfish tastes and satisfactions. We are so much more than gluttony and greed and selfishness and self-satisfaction and self-gratification. We have consciences, we have the ability to think on a higher plane. This, my brothers and sisters, is of course what separates us from the animals. This ability of ours to be able to reason and rationalise abstractly. And so often, rather than, as so many people think, that people of faith uh, rather are given over to uh, uh, whims and fancies and fables, actually the contrary is true for us as Christians. And 2,000 years of scholarly endeavour proves that. The great philosophers and theologians and doctors of the Church who have so influenced the development, particularly of uh, Western civilization. all appealing to the higher intellect, all appealing to our ability to reason, not to be lost simply to subjectivity and emotions, but to understand with faith and see logic. be able to objectify. So let us, my brothers and sisters, follow after Gilbert's scholarly example and remember that God has given us brains and use them, utilise them. Let's not allow ourselves to limit and constrain our knowledge and experience of the world around us simply to that which we can see and taste and hear and feel and touch and, and eat. But let us use the ability that God has given us to rationalise, to objectify, to think abstractly, so that we can indeed be improved by the circumstances and the situations that will come in our lives and embrace them as opportunities of testing and trying and proving our faith. Opportunities to demonstrate 
our knowledge of the love of God and share his love. Particularly, of course, through acts of mercy and kindness. One of the most difficult things we find as human beings is to forgive, is to show mercy. Initially our thoughts are of revenge and retribution. But if we use our God-given ability to rationalise, we should be able to overcome those initial primal instincts And be able to forgive, be able to be kind, to be charitable, to be compassionate, to recognise that so often wrongdoing and sin is born from desperation, from a need for help. this way, my brothers and sisters, we might be able to teach the world around us how to see beyond the initial superficiality of any given situation. And try to reach and touch the hearts of those behind that thin veneer. Touch them with compassion and consolation and with wisdom. Wisdom gained from the knowledge of God's love through his Father, Son and Holy Ghost. Amen. Domino suaviscum et cum spirito tuo. Argenus. In vetute tua domine letabito justus et sube salutari tua mesotabit vehemente, desiderium an meus tibuisti e.
a secula seculorum. Amen. Dominus Obiscum, et cum spirito tuo, sus in corda, habemus et Dominum, gracias ad amus, Domino Deo nostro, dignum et justum est. Vere dignum et justum est e come salutari, non si bisembre dubito, et gracias alcere Domine Sancti Pate, non nipotens et pene Deus. Per Christum Dominum nostrum, per cui mai statum tuum laudum d'angeli ad rango amnazione, stremum potestates, Ceri cerube vetutis e beate serve fim soci su calzione con celebran, con cui vus a nostri svolci tutti in vitium est e precamur, suffici confessione di celebran. Sanctus, 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 Dominus Deus Sabaoth, plenus in celi et terra, gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis. Benedicus qui verit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis.
bagus buat gue tajut telur nih Ya <laughs> Ece amius Dei, ece qui tolit peccato mundi. Domine non sum dignus ut in te subtectum meum, sed tantum dec vemo et sed nabitur anima meum. 
Domine non sun dignus ut in tre sub tectum meum, se tantum dit membro, et se navitur anima mea. Domine non sun dignus ut in tre sub tectum meum, se tantum dit membro, et se navitur anima mea. Brothers and sisters watching Mass online and unable therefore to receive the Blessed Sacrament, we invite you now to make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that Thou art present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love Thee above all things, and I desire Thee in my soul. Since I cannot now receive Thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though Thou wert already there, I embrace Thee and unite myself wholly to Thee. Permit not that I should ever be separated from Thee. Mendico vobis, quod vos qui ridiquistis omnia resecutis estis me, gentum plumici vietis et vitam eternam possidendi. 